I don't know how to 3D model. I want to learn how to 3D model, because I want to be able to make 3D models of my own designs and turn them into miniatures. So let's do that. And let's see how long it takes me to learn it. And to make it clear, by learning it, I don't mean be good at it, but learn it just enough to be able to start making stuff with it. So the program I chose to learn was Blender. Why? It's free. I followed the Blender Guru tutorial on how to make a donut in Blender. It's the classic starting point I always hear about, so that's where I'll start as well. It starts off great. I must say his tutorials are incredibly well made, because he explains things well and also it starts nice and slow. I learned how to move and look around, how to place objects and change their shape, position, and rotation. And then we started the donut which added a few new things. I learned about modifiers, how to mold a shape more organically with edit mode, and slightly touched on sculpt mode to make the drips on the icing extra drippy. Then we went into nodes, which is how the sprinkles get added. A very complex and incredibly powerful tool, which we used first for a very simple and approachable task. With each additional tool, he explained, I already started connecting the dots in my head and imagined how I would be able to use these different things in making my own model. He went more into rendering and materials and creating a scene, which I wasn't really interested in. My goal was to make a model for printing, so that was the extent of what I needed from this tutorial. The nice thing is, the tutorials aren't going anywhere. If I forget something or want to continue, I can always revisit it and learn more anytime. So that was three hours spent on just the first half of that tutorial. I'm also counting the time I paused and went back to actually do things correctly. And after that tutorial, I decided, you know what, let's just go right into modeling my own thing. It'll keep things exciting and also allow me to immediately apply the things that I learned, which will help ingrain them into my memory. So I thought, why not model the witch tier? It is a simple shape, so it should be a good start. Starting off, I was already thinking of how I could apply what I learned to make the witch tier. To make its shape, surely I can create a cylinder, then just use edit mode to shape it roughly into the right shape before sculpting. But I thought to myself, I bet there is a way that I can just trace the outline of the tier and turn that into a shape with how many tools there are in Blender, that must be an option. But how would I find that? What should I look for to find a tutorial on how to do that? And I realized, I bet there's a tutorial on vases, and those would surely do something like that. And I was right. I searched up vase tutorials, and they used exactly what I was looking for. That's another five minutes to the clock. Bing. Next, I just searched up how to add references into Blender, which was as easy as dragging images into Blender, and how to change their opacity. Yes, I had to search that. I couldn't find the option. Another five minutes. Now, I could trace the edge of the witch tier and turn it into a full shape. How do I close the holes on the top and bottom, though? Another three minutes to search that up. Common Sense told me that I should model each component of the tier separately, the same way I would when drawing, so that's what I did, starting only with the stone part of the tier. So, I have the basic shape, now I have to sculpt the details. Well, the donut tutorial only went over sculpting briefly, so I had to search up a separate sculpting tutorial to learn more. So I watched this one, it's the first one that popped up. Literally, in the first 10 minutes, he explained remeshing and that I should keep mesh count low as long as possible, simple brushes like grab and using control to invert the brushes, and mirror mode. That's it. That's all I needed. Okay, got it. No need to tell me more. Let me at it. So that's what I did. With 3 hours and 23 minutes of Blender under my belt, I'm gonna attempt to make my first model. Right after I go to sleep. It was past my bedtime. But tomorrow, I would start right away. And that's what I did, on stream. I thought it would be funny to live stream me making my first ever model, because, well, 
I knew there would be some shenanigans, and that's content. We started off strong, applying what I learned, added the references to the background, used the vase tutorial to make the simple shape, and then went right into sculpting, keeping the mesh as low as possible for as long as possible. It took a while to get a hang of the different brushes, but it was all very enjoyable to mess around with and see what works and what doesn't. After I started getting the hang of things a little, the tear was slowly taking shape. I added the plugs in the eyes and mouth and used a mirror modifier that I learned from the sculpting video to mirror the eyes onto the other side and kept sculpting. I realized on stream that the witch tier was actually the perfect first project. It was a simple shape that was made of stone, which meant that the sculpting was actually very forgiving. I didn't need to make it look like skin or clean and sleek. Rock is crude and rough, so my brush strokes being crude and rough wasn't an issue. For most of this sculpt, I was also using my mouse, which I was surprised with how much control I had with it. As I got more proficient with it, moving around and picking the right brushes, the tears started taking shape. The eyes were quite the challenge, actually. They were the most complex shape on the model, so I had to do a lot of fiddling to get them right. Luckily, because I kept it low poly, it was easy to shift and change things until they were correct. The reference and my intuition helped a lot with just knowing how it was supposed to look. I later on tried to use my drawing pen in tandem with the mouse, and it gave me more confident control with large brush strokes. So I took advantage of that to make the spiral swirls on the hair. Again, the subject matter was very forgiving. I felt very free and not stressed out to make it perfect because of the fact that it was meant to be a rough stone statue. I applied what I learned from the donut with how the edge of the icing was masked off and inflated to make the stars on the witch tears, masking them off and deflating them inwards, I guess. Then playing around with brushes and finding that the pinch one helped to sharpen up the edges. At this point, I was just absolutely baffled on stream. I didn't expect it to turn out well. I mean, the stream was called Watch Me Suck at Blender, but it is actually turning out surprisingly well. Next, I added texture, like cracks and the seam line and trapped air bubbles that would be caused by the molding process in the creation of the tier. Lastly, I added the metal cap on top and the chain link, not forgetting to add that weld line you'd see on metal chains. Then, I exported the model and tried to print it out. But my slicer seemed confused. It said there were cavities, but there weren't any. Overlapping geometry should have been fine, but my slicer thought there were tiny air gaps where each component of the tier overlapped. So I had to merge all the components together and remesh it once more to fix that problem. Thank you, Turnip28, for that advice. And it worked. Okay, first time I maybe printed it a little too small. Let's try that again. There you go. Honestly, I'm so happy with it, and printing it out did help me learn a few more things. The details I added in the end, the cracks and seams, were too small. In Blender, it looked good, but at the scale that I printed it at, they exist, but are just too small to make too much of an impact. So going forward, I have to make textural detail larger to compensate for the small scale. After the tiers were successfully printed, I went on to make their crown as well, which gave me a whole load of new things I needed to learn, but in the end they also turned out very nicely. So how long did the witch tier take me to make? Roughly four hours a lot of which was fiddling around with brushes and figuring out what works. So, what were my thoughts with all of this? I'd say I'm very happy I went about learning how to 3D model. I think I made some really good decisions. 
Firstly, I had a clear goal of what I wanted to do with 3D modeling, which gave me an idea of how much I needed to learn to be able to begin. Secondly, I think it was a good idea to jump into my own work as fast as possible, not bogging myself down with trying to get good or knowing everything before I start. Just the bare minimum and then winging the rest. Thirdly, the subject matter, again, I think was a huge help. The witch tier was just simple enough and forgiving enough to make the perfect first sculpt. So, have I successfully learned 3D modeling in 7 hours and 23 minutes? Of course not. I made so many mistakes. There are countless ways I could have optimized every single step of the process, and countless shortcuts that could have made things easier, and countless tools that I can still learn to make more things. But I think none of that really matters, at least not yet. The most important thing to start with is to actually enjoy the process to get stuck in it. If I would have spent days following tutorials before even attempting to model my own thing, would it have turned out better? Probably, but it would have been boring, tedious, and maybe it could have even put me off of 3D modeling entirely. I can always get better at optimizing later. The only regret I have is that I didn't try 3D modeling sooner. Because now that I have, and actually went about it in an enjoyable way, I can't wait to keep learning and modeling and get better. The STL file for the Witch Tier is in a drive that I will link in the description below in case you want to print one for yourself. So what's next? Well, I've already designed the next thing I'll attempt to model. It's a bull gargoyle within Burla. A step up from the witch tier in terms of complexity, but now I'm more confident than ever that even if I get stuck, I can probably just find a random tutorial on the internet that will help me get unstuck. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to my patrons for your wonderful support. And for any of you learning something new or toiling away at a craft, have fun creating. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? No, what the fuck is that? I know exactly why. Or I think that is why. It's because I didn't close the fucking hole at the top. Also, bear with me, by the way. Please don't, like, anyone who knows Blender, don't just scream at me in the chat or whatever. Like, this is all fun and just a part of learning. So, uh, I'm gonna be stupid. I'm gonna make the wrong choices. It's inevitable. Ta-da! There you go. Voila. Why the fuck is there a schnoz on the back? What the f- There's a nose on his- I didn't want a nose in the back! Where the fuck did that come from? Give it- give me, Remove that shit! He's got a tumor! Or the- the grabby tool. And then I can go to this view and just sort of... Yoink it out. And I can actually also see what I'm doing. Awesome. Whoa. Whoa. How beautiful he is. How does that look? <laughs> I can't. I can't. No, actually, I think the other one's better for that job. Oh. There you go. Oh. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, I am incredibly immature. This is... <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
It's so forceful. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I'm sorry. <laughs>